Okay, on this building I preloaded the architect drawings as external references. So if I just bring in ground floor floor layout and the sections and elevations with it, so I get an overview of the overall building. That's the sections right there. So I have a good overview and a good idea what the 3D model is supposed to look like. Just zoom in here. So they match up nicely and I can take my floor heights directly off that section view. So I've started finished floor level. There's 12 foot from floor to floor on the ground floor. And then on the upper floor, it's from floor to ceiling, nine foot and one inches. So I'll set up my stories. That's ground floor number one. Start the walls with number one and I have 12 foot to cover. Okay, next floor is new one here. That's my intermediate floor, one floor up, second floor here. We'll start again with number one. Bottom edge is at 12 feet now. And the maximum wall height is the nine foot one inches. Okay, that's my stories created. I go to ground floor, select, and now I'm working on ground floor level. Move that in center. Up here is a drop box. I can switch between ground floor and second floor, but we'll keep working on ground floor for now. So just to verify my wall buildup, I'll take a quick measurement of my, of my wall thickness. Here in the window would be a good point. So just go give me a distance dimension on this wall and this is six inches so I have a five and a half inch framing layer and that's exactly the wall property that we prepared earlier external wall ventilation and siding here's my wall thickness and the five and a half inch thickness for the framing layer I'll position reference axis connect the walls in the corners Go from right to left, that's clockwise. And then I just draw around the outside perimeter of the architect's drawings. So go from here up to that corner. I position the outside of my stick frame. So this nicely matches up with the architect's idea. Move over to here and go right to there. Because here I have a change in the wall thickness and that's where the architect specified 2x6 studs in the flat stud furring. So we'll have to adjust our wall build up here. Go back to wall properties and pick external ventilated siding. And then I add on the inside a service cavity. This is to run the wiring later on and that's one and a half inch studs actually battens. Go to my batten slices and do horizontal service cavity to run my wiring. Reference axis stays the same. Just save this in case I need it later on. Furring on the inside. Okay. And then I'll just take that new wall property and continue from there. Again, connect in the corners. Reference axis right to left, that's still good. Here I need to make sure it's still set to reference axis. So the walls line up nicely. And there you can see the changed wall thickness works nicely, nicely together with the architect's idea. Right to here, and here we change back to the regular wall buildup. In the foyer though, I have a different ceiling height, different room height. So if I look at my elevation, you can see that the walls start higher up. So let's just find out how much that is. 
go from here to there. That's 11 inches exactly. So when I draw my new walls here, I just start them at a different level. Bottom edge is at 11 inches now. And I'll take those 11 inches off the total wall height. So they're flush at the top. 11 foot and 1 inch. Good. Continue from there. Again along the outside. And here in the corner it didn't connect automatically. So I'll fix that up quickly. Go to make a corner connection between this and that wall. Done. And here we carry on as before. Oh, there's another step in the height. So that's at a new height level. Going from datum point to vertically up here, one foot ten inches. So it's really good to have the sections and the floor plan together. Okay, wall definition, adjust the bottom edge. One foot ten inch. And again, we take that off the total height of the wall. That's a ten foot two inches now. Okay. And just carry on as before around the office part of that building. Go to here and past here. No, wait, that was too far. I've run past the garage here. So I'll quickly throw this one wall out, delete this, go back to my wall definition. Last values are still in the dialog box. And it goes to here and around the front of the garage. Back to here. And this is where the height level is going to change again. So quick look at my section. See, there's the height level. Need to be careful about that. So that goes just back to zero and a 12 foot total wall height. And then I'm about ready to close the outside perimeter of our building around the fireplace and all the way back to here. So from here I have my outside walls drawn out. I quickly show that in 3D. Oh, there's one corner to fix, sorry. From here to there. Okay, check. Okay, that all looks good. Turn it up into 3D. You can see the floor plan still sitting there in 2D at the bottom of the floor level. And I'll quickly go to a different visual style so you can see the walls better. Do them shaded. And that's my external walls. So there's an elevation view. Back to 3D. Maybe have a look at a different visual style yet. There's ground floor, wall number 18. Okay. Quickly go to transparent. So you have multiple visual styles that you can pick from, whatever works best for the design. And up here, just zoom in on that wall, I'll have a window that I have to insert. So go to square windows here. I'll insert it into this wall. And that's my kitchen window. Wood painted with a high transom. Casement window. You can see the transom here. There's the U value for my window. So the energy performance, same as the wall and the solar energy transmittance, that's 70% of the solar energy make it through the glass. Rough opening is nine foot four inches wide and five feet high. 
sill height is four foot two inches, which leaves us at the top height of the window at nine foot two. And I offset the window from the outside of the wall by two and five eighths. Structure. This is just for visual representation. I have a tilt and turn window specified here. This one opens to the outside though, so it's just a turn, hinges on the left side. Second pane and third pane is also just a turn window hinge on the right. I'll grab the center of that window and drop it right there where the architect specified. I could still move it left and right if I needed to, but just drop it at zero. And here you can see the window in 3D. So I'll make that a little bit shorter and show you the completed ground floor plan. So there's internal walls that I added. Look at that in transparent view. So I have doors and windows in here, internal walls, garage door. Look at the whole thing from top. You see how it matches up with the architect's drawings. I have a couple of double walls where the architect specified bigger walls. And if I go and switch to second floor, I already drawn that out as well. I'll just show you second floor here. Again, external walls, internal walls, doors and windows. Very similar process to what I've shown you before. All right, I have a total building model now in here. So if I just switch on the walls from ground floor in my display filter, you can see the different story heights and how it actually goes together. So you can exactly see if walls line up from ground floor to the upper floor. So now we have our walls completed. And we can move on and put the roof on. For that, I switch to roof calculation. And first off, I have to define the footprint of my roof. The most simple thing is to just take ground floor or intermediate floor here, copy the reference axis. I can also do a graphical input or use any of the prepared shapes. So here I just have my footprint of the roof taken off the reference axis of the walls. I'll have to adjust a couple of things. So here over the balcony, the roof will have to come out by another seven feet. And go to edit roof and move this line line number five and move it out by seven feet. Okay. That should be about it and we can go and calculate the roof shape. So go back to roof calculation. I take all outlines now. At my roof properties I will use a simple roof here. Roof slope has a rise of three inches over twelve foot over twelve inches. Overhang is two foot. And the eaves height I quickly determine. Here I have my rafter configuration, and this is the perpendicular distance over the over the bird's mouth. Okay, that's the total eave height that it comes out to. Eave height is out here on the rafter, top edge. And it will calculate the roof shape with ridge lines, hips and valleys automatically for me. This is in 3D, second floor walls and the roof together. Over here I need to adjust because I don't want those hips and valleys. I want that just to be one continuous roof surface. So I'll have to adjust number 20 and two. That's not roof surfaces there. Let's just go to no properties. 
and 90 degrees. The overhang I keep though, and the eave side is irrelevant. And on side number one, I'll reference that back to side number 19. So this will be one flush, continuous roof surface. So after it works out the eave side automatically, and you can see now how this changed into one roof slope and it just took the eave side down. Okay, so I'll make that a little bit more visual and add the roof panels from the properties. Okay, so there you can see the roof finish. transparent view and you can see the entire roof landscape there.